welcome students to the online NPTEL course user interface design. Uh, in this class, we will talk about uh, the visual perception and semiotics. Uh, so, semiotics is the science of how people interpret science and uh, this uh, subject came from linguistics and how we interpret uh, the language of iconography or the sign, but it uh, is uh, widely used in uh, the visual communication design and user interface design so, and also the product design. So, when metaphorically we represent something or when we put a particular color, what is the uh, significance of that? and how people interpret and how people uh, psychologically perceive a particular color, icon or the composition, of, uh, the overall composition and how people read the narrative and also our website can also have a narrative. So, how from the starting page, what are the information you give to the, uh, the people and what is the next layer of information. So, uh, the information gradually unfolds. So, you can think about it is like a, a small storytelling. It can also, it depends on the uh, typology of the website. So, website also can be a um, game based, gamified uh, inter interface. So, there it will be more uh, um, towards the narrative uh, style of uh, a narrative style will be more strong. But uh, throughout a, part a particular process of uh, the task flow, so uh, it can, uh, uh, so for example, a ticket booking, so there is a journey of the users. So, users start and launch into the uh, first home page and then uh, start thinking about the next, uh, um, uh, so where they will go and then uh, different flights or train, uh, available trains or buses comes and then they select and then they uh, look at the uh, timing or the uh, cost and then uh, they uh, pay and then they uh, do. So, there is a journey and so that is uh, actually a narrative. So, that is a task going on and you can think that um, uh, uh, the task as a narrative. So, and also when you uh, order food and everything, so there is a process going on. So, there is a sequential tasks which is going on and how people interpret that and how all the informations together are helping people to remotely do the uh, particular task which websites are designed for it. So, uh, what websites or web designer wanted the task to happen, uh, uh, the way the task uh, to happen. So, users should understand that and then they f should follow the similar way how designers have designed. So, initially we were uh, discussing about the users uh, uh, designers conceptual model and uh, users uh, mental model. So, that should match in the system image of the design. So, for that the all these metaphors and how people interpret uh, design, how uh, people perceive the design, uh, the icons and colors is very important for user uh, designers to understand. So, in this uh, class, we will talk about the se uh, theory of sem uh, semiotics, a brief history uh, of uh, semiotics and how it is uh, um, divided. Uh, so, we will uh, uh, discuss the Ferdinand, uh, the Saucer's Sauce, uh, uh, theory and Charles Saunders Parse's theory and how uh, briefly we will talk about it. And then we will go to the main uh, three part of uh, semiotics, which is syntax, uh, semantics and pragmatics. These three parts are uh, 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 three different parts of semiotics. So, semiotics is the big bigger umbrella within that syntax is there, how different uh, things are uh, sequentially arranged and the semantics of the meaning part of it and the pragmatics and how people interpret. And also we will discuss other things which is there within these three parts. So, uh, the, uh, the main thing of the semiotics is uh, semiotic analysis involves identifying the uh, constituents unit of semiotic system such as the text, uh, sociocultural uh, practices, uh, the structure, relationship between them, um, uh, the opposition, correlation and logical relation. So, the, uh, there are uh, sociocultural background based on the sociocultural background of people, the perception of uh, icon might differ. So, what uh, the way, uh, way um, uh, so it also depends on the target audience. So, who is the target audience based on them the design should change. So, 
uh, not only the UI UX design also the visual design uh, should change based on the particular target audience. So if uh, they are uh, based on their sociocultural context, uh, their liking, their lifestyle, their perception of color is different, their choice of colors will be different, the way they read that is also different. For example, we were discussing over the Gutenberg's um, uh, diagram, so that might not work uh, uh, for the people who read from the opposite side, so uh, which is uh, from the uh, read and write from the other side, which is from uh, uh, right to left for uh, people from the Middle Eastern countries. So they will uh, the Urdu and Arabic they write from uh, right to left. So their condition in that way, so their reading habit will be different. And for if your target audience are them, so uh, the design principle should differ. And also based on different uh, region, different uh, sociocultural background, the color preference, the meaning of different icons will to uh, might be totally different. So the learning of various ways designers can employ the meaning and uh, based on the target audience um, uh, is also um, you should um, learn through the semiotic um, interpretation. So uh, there is two component, one is uh, uh, we have already discussed the design component and the design methodology, now we are talking about the users. Uh, we also talked about the users based on uh, the user uh, research and we will talk about the user um, feedback. So uh, there we need to understand how um, uh, we need to also understand how uh, their perception is different. So uh, it, we should not only uh, uh, be based on the user uh, feedback on the last moment. So beforehand, we should uh, inter we should uh, be able to understand what they might like, and we should give the design. Uh, we should create the design based on their uh, perception. So uh, semiotics. Uh, the, what is semiotics? Semiotics is the way we can pull an emotional response out of the world, and it also helps how emotion happens in the imagery. So uh, after looking at the imagery, what kind of emotions and what kind of perce uh, perceived uh, um, uh, interpretation can happen within the uh, user. So the, uh, there are different design elements. So all these design elements and how people react to it, um, that is the uh, main um, thing of the uh, icons and the, uh, uh, the sem semiotics. Uh, so it is the science of, uh, um, uh, semiotics is the science of science and it, um, it is the science of design communication and so this is where the semiotic uh, plays a role. So uh, uh, between the design and uh, the perception of the user, so what is going on, so that is um, the semiotics talks about that. So for example, if we look at these two uh, ex uh, examples, so one is the FedEx uh, logo. Uh, so FedEx uh, is a movers and packers, so they uh, transport um, goods from one uh, place to the another place. So this is, if you look at the logo of the FedEx, so you can see based on the uh, figure ground relationship and the solid and void, so there's an arrow created within this type, uh, just a typographic logo. Uh, so that signifies that it's something to do with the movement. So that has been created based on this. So first, in the first go, we read the FedEx, um, uh, the typographic uh, logo, and then uh, this orange acts as a. Uh, um, the first when we read this white acts as a uh, background, and this blue and orange acts as figure. And then uh, if we look at the orange, then orange becomes the background, and this white again becomes the uh, figure. And then we see this um, uh, arrow, which uh, which signifies the meaning of the. Um, uh, of the company, and also we um, the uh, uh, the basic example can be the color of red. So the color red uh, for most of us signifies the uh, danger, and it might not signify danger all the time when you, uh, we re uh, re uh, uh, type it with the typographic um, example uh, type uh, the, the phonetics of danger or the uh, letter of danger, and then with the skull and bone, then it uh, strong communicates this uh, the meaning danger so if we just take red color it might be uh, just a red signal or something it can also um, uh, signify passion but when we combine that with the um, um, type later and also some icons which is uh, the skull and uh, bone then uh, then it uh, uh, together it com uh, uh, communicates the uh, this later danger 
And uh, the historic background, if we look at, so for, uh, Ferdinand the Saucers uh, was the father of modern uh, semiotics. He used this, uh, uh, he uh, defined these terms uh, in the um, uh, beginning. And later, uh, Charles de, uh, de Peirce uh, developed the similar philosophy and uh, based on the sociocultural concept. So, uh, based on their uh, theory, so uh, there are a few uh, terminology we should uh, discuss. One is the signifier and is the signified and uh, together what is it? Uh, so, we are signif uh, the signifier and signified are talking about the sign. So, sign is the smallest unit of meaning used for the communi uh, used to communicate. It is the whole that results from the association of the signifier with the signified. So, signs uh, are um, the smallest unit and signifiers and signified are uh, together in, uh, uh, helping um, the users to understand the meaning of the sign. So, what is signifier? It is the uh, material uh, thing of the, uh, of the signifies, example the word on the page or the tactile expression or an image which are signified and signified is the concept concept that is uh, that signifies wants to refer. So, for example, if I um, say pen, uh, the phonetic uh, expression of pen is actually uh, depicting the actual uh, context which is the signified. So, pen, uh, the phonetic sound of pen becomes the signifier and the actual pen becomes the signified. So, when I say pen, so that uh, the image of this pen, actual pen comes into people's mind and it can, uh, if uh, people understand English, then only uh, they will interpret uh, this image of an actual pen will come into their mind. So, uh, the sound is just a signifier, the actual concept is the pen, the actual pen. Uh, similarly, the, uh, we can just draw a pen, icon of a pen. Um, um, so, that becomes the signifier, this icon becomes the signifier of an actual pen. So, it can be a very uh, or it can also be a photograph of a pen. So, photograph of a pen is not a pen. So, it is a, it's a photograph that signifies the actual pen. So, uh, signifiers can be uh, the photo, um, photograph or the icon or the phonetics or just writing uh, the pen pen. So, all these are signifiers and what we are signifying? So, that is the signifier which is the actual pen or something which uh, comes into people's mind. So, that is uh, the actual signified thing is there in the uh, mental image. So, that is uh, the mental image of uh, the uh, mental model of the user that is uh, the signified is there and all this phonetics and uh, the text or the photographs or the icons are uh, signifier which is helping uh, the user to recall that. Um, uh, thing which is there in their mental model. So, all this relationship between the signifier and signified is called signification. Uh, so, that is the process. So, here if we look at the sign is the uh, element. So, sign can be text, um, icons and everything. So, uh, as it came from the linguistics, so initially it, uh, uh, that is the source of uh, genesis of this concept. Then signified and signifiers are interacting between it. So, signified is the concept which is the mental model and signifier can be sound, or word or the image and it can be flower. So, this is a uh, painting of a flower and um, uh, then uh, actually we think about the flower which ha we have already uh, have in the, our mental model. So, this is a painting of a um, something like a sunflower and then um, if we look at this though uh, the mental uh, image of the sunflower will come into our mind. So, uh, this is the concept of uh, semiotics, the process of how signifier uh, signifies uh, signified. Uh, so, that signification, process of signification is called semiotics. So, the, it is the science of signs and uh, this signs are not just iconographic signs, it can be uh, real uh, picture, uh, photorealistic uh, picture, the abstract painting or um, figurative painting or uh, icon, uh, very minimalist icon or can be text or can be word, uh, the phonetics. And uh, so, within that uh, semiotics, semiotics can be divided into three different segments. So, one is uh, syntax, the second is um, semantics and third is pragmatics. These all three component together uh, creates the semiotics or the uh, science of science.
So what is syntax? Syntax is the hardware aspect of the language. Uh, it introduces us with the structure, how language uh, should be formed and how culture set up and eventually codifies things like grammar or uh, rules of proper communication. So this is the structural part of uh, the um, the meaning. So uh, when we create, uh, so there has to be in a uh, proper sequence to make a meaning. So for example, if we uh, look at uh, um, a storyboard or uh, the animation or um, uh, um, an, uh, narrative comics or the uh, narr uh, the visual narrative. So each and every storyboard should have a proper sequence. So we cannot jumble off the uh, story. Then uh, the narrative sequence will be destroyed. So if the first sequence is drawn, the first sequence uh, should be drawn here, the second sequence should be drawn here and the third sequence should be drawn there so that we have, um, we can understand what is the flow of the total story. So if the first sequence is here, third sequence is here or it is jumbled up, then the total meaning might, uh, uh, meaning of the story might not be uh, perceived. Uh, for example, and if we designing a website, the first um, uh, if we start reading from top the first information which uh, users need first should be on the top the next information level of information which users need should be on uh, the next level and so it has a proper sequence top to bottom vertically and also when we uh, think about the total website so the first sequence uh, all this sequence should uh, confront with the task flow of the user so what is the first uh, first task people will do that should come in the first hierarchy of information architecture, the next ta task should be on the next hierarchy and the uh, th uh, other task should be on the other hierarchy. So it uh, should also be based on uh, different hierarchy of the, uh, of the task flow. So the next part of uh, uh, the semiotics is the semantics. Semantics is the language software or the meaning. So uh, the way we create meaning and the way we uh, create the signs and signifiers, icons, index and symbols, these are the part of it. So the meaning part of it uh, is associated with the semantics. So uh, first is a sequence in which sequence the uh, total uh, task flow or the um, way we uh, uh, read a particular website or the holistically how the websites different pages are layered in different uh, hierarchy that has uh, is the syntax part of it so how the way it has been uh, designed in different hierarchy uh, based on the task flow is the syntax and now the meaning part of it is the semantics the, uh, and the next part is the uh, pragmatics. Pragmatics is the relationship between the science, uh, science and their effect on the user's mind. Uh, the function and the context of the user, um, use of science, um, that is how the McCoy um, told. The study of the ways in which science are used and interpreted. So one uh, part is semantics is how, what is the uh, uh, meaning and other part is the uh, what is going in the uh, people's mind. So uh, when uh, when we design the design elements are the semantics and the way it has been uh, will be interpreted is the pragmatic part of the uh, semiotics. So pragmatics is the study of the way in which um, signs are used and interpreted, the context in which language is used and the function of the language and everyday way we use the word and image and communication. How do they uh, function and, the, and in what setting do they function properly? So um, in the semantics when um, we are talking about um, the uh, icons, index and symbols, the small elements and in pragmatics what we are talking about is in different contexts all the same icons uh, uh, and elements might uh, differ. Uh, so uh, for example, if you look at um, uh, the, the icon of a tree um, in um, uh, uh, one icon of a tree uh, and uh, then um, this will uh, might signify tree and then if you uh, see uh, two three different uh, I icons of trees similarly juxtaposed by each other then it will signify a forest. So uh, in the context with the setting um, that changes but the semantic part is it's, it's all the same icon and uh, based on its composition it uh, might change. Now if we uh, see the icon of a tree uh, with the uh, icon of um, another flowy lines which might signify river and then with uh, two triangles which is 
uh, uh, there which might signify a uh, um, uh, um, signify um, mountains, then this will be signified as a landscape. So their meaning uh, based on their juxtaposition and, uh, is different and also based on the people's perception will also be different. So uh, they might, uh, few people might even uh, look at it in a different way and perceive something uh, something else out of it. They might perceive as uh, like a village and uh, something else based on their per previous perception because everybody's mental model is different. So uh, within semantics, first we uh, discuss the semantics, uh, then we'll discuss pragmatics and uh, syntax. Then within semantics, there are three things. One is icon, index, and symbol. What is icon? Uh, it's a physical resemblance of the ob uh, to the object uh, or concept is icon. It's very realistic photographs, realistic statues, maps, diagrams, etc., which is easily understood and recognized is icon. Uh, so it will be more photorealistic or or a uh, very figurative drawing. So a detailed drawing of uh, something which uh, of a signified uh, is a icon. Uh, so this is a painting. Um, uh, this is not a pipe. Um, so um, uh, the name of the painting is this is not a pipe by um, uh, the, uh, the name of the painting is uh, this is not a pipe. And here you can see this pipe is painted in a very realistic manner. So uh, the painting of the pipe is so why the uh, meaning of uh, why the painting is named as this is not a pipe because it's a painting of a pipe and that's why the concept of signified and signifiers are um, uh, touched upon here in this painting. So uh, the painting of the pipe is a signifier and what is it signified is the actual pipe. So. Um, and uh, the way it is uh, drawn is has a very for, um, uh, a very figurative uh, figurative approach of uh, uh, drawing. So the painter of this uh, painting is uh, Marguerite Rene. And um, the next thing is the index. Uh, index is a little abstract form of uh, representation. So there is a direct link between the science and the objects or concept. Uh, it is an indicator. And uh, I think uh, uh, so. It can be hand gesture, symptoms, clues. Audience can figure out the cause and effect of the relationship. Um, so, uh, so th these are not so direct. Uh, index are a uh, little indirect uh, than uh, uh, icon, but more uh, direct than symbol. So, this can be uh, gestures, symptoms, and clues, uh, which will uh, give the clue of uh, relationship. For example, if there is a um, composition, and this composition is directing to something and then uh, the focal point is created over here which uh, becomes the protagonist of the concept. So those all um, uh, things are kind of like a hand gesture. So this, this uh, lines are directing towards this. Uh, so that also acts as a hand gesture. So together that creates a composition and um, uh, maybe something metaphorically represented. Uh, so for example, this is Edward Munch's uh, cream. So in this painting, all these flowy, uh, scratchy uh, uh, lines uh, uh, and the color, uh, uh, the warm color tone and the type of uh, image uh, of uh, express, um, expression is um, uh, there within the fa face of the, uh, um, the per person painted um, over here. Uh, and everything is uh, given an, an expression of scream so, and phobia. So the way it is painted is not so figurative and all these uh, skies and um, flowy lines. So this comes within the expressionism of uh, painting and it uh, expresses the concept of uh, phobia which is a scream. The next is uh, the symbol. Uh, the symbol is the learned and agreed upon code. Uh, so it uh, an arbitrary connection between the science and the objects or concept can be language, number, alphabets, and all other symbols. Uh, those are abstract trademarks. So uh, all these um, symbols, if you don't un uh, know the meaning of it, so that requires a background uh, knowledge, in-depth knowledge to interpret a symbol. For example, if you um, look at uh, the symbol of uh, this alphabet, Roman alphabet 1. So people who uh, can understand this um, in read English can only uh, read it as uh, 1. And uh, this has nothing to do with uh, just a number which is 
uh, one and uh, if you don't know and if I write in some other language uh, so this is uh, how one is written in Bengali so if you don't know how um, it is written in different scripture uh, so you will not uh, conceptually you will not uh, know what is um, uh, what it signifies so you need to know a particular uh, you need to have a lot of background knowledge to un interpret this for example and it can be also dif um, different from different people so if I, if I just draw these symbol and people who are more associated with the Indian um, context and with the Hinduism they will in, they might interpret this as swastik symbol but uh, maybe people from Germany will interpret as a Nazi symbol so same uh, kind of uh, uh, composition same icon can uh, can be interpreted in a different way uh, based on the people from uh, different background knowledge so if we just uh, now uh, syntax in the syntax uh, there are different uh, elements um, of uh, within the syntax uh, so which is the hardware part of it or the uh, how the sequentially everything goes so one is the syntagm uh, syntagm is a collection of signs uh, organized into a linear sequence and a syntagm occurs at multiple levels word sentence story formation it also occurs in multiple levels of uh, web uh, site design uh, the syntagm is there in one particular hierarchy of web uh, websites so which is uh, we are if you are in one uh, level of information architecture there is a syntagm and then the next level of hierarchy there is again a syntagm so and uh, syntagm is uh, when there is a particular one way so when it is just going linear uh, in a linear fashion then there is a syntagm but in a information architecture generally it can bifurcate from different uh, sides and so there is no particular linearity it goes back uh, so that that kind of information architecture is not part of syntagm because it's not going linearly so there is a lot of connection and from where you can bifurcate but uh, there are some websites which you can uh, uh, which you might have com uh, come across so where there is just one option of scrolling down so uh, if you look at the main page of uh, Facebook uh, so you just scroll down so there is just a linear um, um, uh, flow of um, uh, the hi hierarchy of the uh, the way you are uh, going the information has been uh, shown so also if you think about the Google search engine so there is a one uh, linear way it is going on so that comes under the syntagm so there is no bifurcation so you go to, um, you see the first uh, layer of search you go to the next layer so it's a continuation so it, 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 it's just broken into the page, um, uh, pagination it's not a continuous um, a, uh, scroll like Facebook but it's uh, like um, um, di uh, broken in different pages like if you click one two three four but there's one linear option so you can come back to from uh, uh, seventh layer of search to the one uh, first layer but it's, it there is a one particular uh, linear direction so it's not uh, information architecture is not uh, bifurcating from different uh, uh, place so also in few uh, website you will see you just scroll down and there might be some um, animation and UI, change, um, uh, UI transitions but it just scroll down from top to bottom and you go to the previous page you, it will just go up and uh, go, go to the next page it will just go down so there is a one single higher uh, layer of linear sequence so how you want to design how uh, the sequence of your website or the information architecture is so that um, should be designed uh, that should be thought about based on the function of the website so if uh, the website is following a, sy a syntagm or a linear sequence the website's information architecture should look like this so it should just go like a uh, one uh, uh, single uh, direction so facebook is not exactly the same um, uh, similar uh, example because if you go to the home then uh, is uh, this is one and then you go to the, your next profile then it will be like that but when you think about a news feed how it is coming so it is something like that you just go deep into the website and the examples of syntagm is when uh, uh, when the um, uh, the syntag syntagm's uh, perspective is when uh, this linear sequence is broken you change it then the meaning might change for example a uh, comic strip where the first uh, uh, information should be at the first 
and the second information should be on the second and third and it should be arranged in that way so if you change it uh, the total meaning will be totally different and also if you look at the uh, um, Paul Rand's design um, uh, the IM, uh, IBM's uh, logo design uh, so it's one iteration of the IBM's logo. Uh, so IBM, and uh, this is signified in different uh, icons, which is metaphorically representing something, uh, something which is n nothing to do with uh, the letter IBM, which is the actual signified. And uh, but uh, this is um, uh, um, um, uh, this is creating a metaphor of uh, some uh, other element which is phonetically uh, similar to IBM and this is how the logo is designed but if you change the sequence then we, we cannot read it as a uh, company's logo of IBM. So the order is crucial uh, uh, for meaning in uh, case of syntagm. Um, so uh, if we um, write like this, it might not have a meaning. But if we write uh, this, uh, then it will have a meaning. And even in the sentence and uh, the paragraph, there has to be a syntagm and uh, uh, in linguistics. So uh, syn a syntagm will be a proper uh, sequence of horizontal and vertical se uh, sequence. Now the next is the paradigm. Paradigm is the uh, class of all item that can be uh, substituted into the same position or slot in a uh, grammatical sentence. Uh, so it can be considered that uh, paradigms are running vertically, a set of items that uh, form mutual ex uh, mutually exclusive choices. For example, uh, if there is a, a system so which is uh, a syntagm and uh, maybe option 3 can be replaced by uh, many other things, so that creates a par um, uh, paradigm, so which can be interchangeably replaced. So that creates uh, maybe uh, you can um, that gives the multivariate options in design. So maybe in this page instead of that page, something else if you put the holistic meaning does not change. Uh, for example, if we look at um, uh, the website of a particular um, um, search engine or uh, b a particular um, uh, e-commerce website. So if a total meaning of the e-commerce website, the how it functions, that will not change if we change this icon with something else. Uh, because uh, it's just uh, showing what are the different uh, products on the um, uh, in this in this um, website. So if we even replace this, uh, that will also not change, and um, um, uh, the meaning of this total website will not change. But definitely the purchase, um, uh, the process of purchase, the uh, uh, clickbait or something, uh, the uh, probability of clicking on that uh, particular uh, product will change. But uh, total meaning of the structure of the sequence will not. change change if we just change the pro, um, uh, the image or the product in a uh, holistic um, uh, this this um, um, e-commerce website similarly in uh, youtube if the um, videos get replaced uh, by some some other video then it will the total uh, meaning of this um, um, uh, website will not change then uh, the next is meet a combination of uh, paradigms and syntagm that make up an um, um, a soft told story with an elaborate cultural association. For example, um, cowboy myth and romantic myth. So these are these are uh, coming from uh, linguistics. So these are the genres, uh, genre of different uh, styles. So this combination of uh, syntagm and paradigm together uh, creates a narrative. So it might change. Uh, so uh, for example, if we think about the folklore, so uh, the same folklore, if um, uh, the syntagm is similar, and then the different um, uh, in uh, different regions, the folklore has a minute change which we, uh, is the change of paradigm can also have a, simi a similar genre of the folklore which is uh, the total holistic meaning is same but there are minute um, iterations. In the website giving a similar um, uh, analogy is might be dif uh, difficult but if you can, uh, if you can think about multi uh, when you are creating a multivariate options. So if you have a uh, concept of uh, myth uh, that might help. Uh, for example if you are stuck with one particular design, change few options uh, which might not change the total uh, website of this uh, design and then uh, which also has a similar task flow and then it can create a different um, design which might uh, act and function better based on user testing. 
Uh, next part of the semiotics is uh, pragmatics and uh, pragmatics uh, within pragmatics there are three things this is how uh, the connotation denotation and polysemy uh, the as we have discussed the pragmatics part is how people interpret all this sequential part which is the syntax and all these icons which is the uh, semantic part um, of semiotics so uh, the structure which is the syntax uh, which is the pragmatics and uh, the uh, semantics which is the icons and how these uh, two things are interpreted which is the pragmatic part where, where the user's perspective is coming into picture. So there can be connotation, the way it, uh, the meaning is transferred, it can be connotative meaning, it can be a denotative meaning and there can be polysemy. First uh, let us discuss uh, denotation, uh, denotation is a representation of science pr uh, primary meaning which is real, direct and clearly perceivable. It is the most basic literal primary meaning of the sign example the word um, any word which is written like that so first meaning will be signified as a parti uh, particular uh, that particular thing so if we take the example of um, a particular flower like rose so that signifies only the flower rose uh, so that is the first layer of meaning the first meaning of it if we just write uh, that uh, name of the flower or um, uh, just phonetically um, uh, pronounce it then the flowers image will be the first layer of the basic meaning which is denotation. Next it might um, have a signification of um, um, romance, um, it might uh, that particular uh, flower might have some connection in particular um, in few people's mind. So that will not be a denotative meaning, that will go to the connotative meaning, so that is the next layer of meaning. So for that you need some other background knowledge or ba uh, background perception about that particular flower. But the uh, denotative meaning is that just the flower. Um, uh, particular flower rose and even for a uh, few people it might be uh, they might think about the uh, Shakespeare's um, uh, those uh, lines like uh, whatever you call uh, the flowers that name so those many other things can come into people's mind so it can be unstop um, it can go on uh, but the first layer of meaning as is just the uh, the basic meaning so uh, this is Andy Warhol's uh, painting of um, uh, soup can. So, uh, if you look at uh, this, uh, he has just painted different soup cans, and it's um, uh, within the pop um, painting, pop uh, style painting of uh, by Andy Warhol. So, uh, so this is a different soup can has uh, different flavors are written over there. If you um, uh, see the actual painting, you can read that. So, it's just uh, it talks about the monotony of everyday life. So, it is represented with the soup can. So, if you consume, uh, it's like every day we consume uh, in urban life we consume one canned soup and then just the flavor of the soup changes but it is kind of a repetition of everyday life so that it, uh, it is signifying that. So signification of the repetition of everyday life is not the denotative meaning, the denotative meaning is the soup can. So it's uh, many soup cans are drawn uh, like that so the first layer of the meaning if we look at this painting and uh, the soup can will come into your mind. So this is not the soup can, this is the painting of a soup can, but when you look at the soup can, um, this painting, uh, soup can's image will come into your mind. And the next, if you start um, connecting all these uh, soup cans, why it is drawn like that and if you read about the painting's uh, theme and if you look the different flavors are uh, drawn, then, then you can uh, connect with the monotony of the life of everyday life and um, in this uh, painting. So that becomes a connotative meaning, not the denotative meaning. So uh, the connotation the, or the connotative meaning is the second layer of the secondary meaning which is not direct, indirect meaning and it needs uh, some background knowledge and it depends on the culture, uh, secondary meaning is dependent on, on the culture and the, uh, it depends uh, some, um, on people's perception. So this is. Uh, a uh, painting uh, from uh, 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 basically from Madhya Pradesh, uh, the central part of India, which is Gandhi painting. And if you look at the painting, so this is a deer, and the deer's horn is transferred into the tree. So this is coming from a folklore of a particular site. So if you know the folklore, then uh, you will understand why this is painted like that, and how the flora and fauna interacts with each other. And uh, based on that, it, the story is there. So otherwise, this is just a deer with. Uh, uh, horn uh, whose horn is turn, turned into uh, tree. So the nec uh, next layer of meaning will be only um, uh, understood or uh, 
uh, interpreted by the people who understand the style of painting. So this is again uh, coming from the um, uh, Indian mythology of um, um, Ardhanarishwar painted by um, Avanindranath uh, Tagore. And so uh, why it is painted like that? So that ne uh, needs some background knowledge of this um, uh, painting of Avanindranath Thakur or uh, the uh, mythology of um, Indian mythology. And uh, again, some example of connotation and connotation might vary uh, how you uh, based on the setup. So that's what we are uh, talking about when uh, we are talking about the pragmatics, the setup or the position of a particular icon which comes from the semantics uh, might vary. So semantically, this is uh, these are all apples. Uh, so um, semantically, that particular painting of this particular painting or the photograph of if you look at uh, this particular uh, imageries, um, they all signify apples which is a fruit. But the context, uh, the overall context of this apple, um, ba uh, based on the overall context of this apple, the pragmatics changes. Uh, so the connotative meaning of this apple, uh, this total painting or the, um, um, or, or the uh, packaging design changes. So the first is the Titian's painting, uh, Adam and Eve, their um, having this apple. So uh, he here, this is uh, the meaning of apple and the story and everything revolves around a particular uh, um, uh, Christian um, uh, story. So that uh, changes if you know the, um, uh, know the particular story. Now this is Rainy Marguerite's painting in uh, 1964. Uh, so Titian's painting was in 1570 and if you know the story, then you can interpret the Rene Marguerite's uh, painting. So if this is the uh, first story, this is connoti um, in connotation wise this are different. Uh, so this is the first initial story, so this is borrowing, this Rene Marguerite's painting is borrowing this concept uh, of um, Adam and Eve and then painting, um, this painting is uh, drawn like that. So this painting's name is Son of Man. Um, so uh, what he is painting is painting an apple in front of a face of a man. Uh, so uh, there is no uh, facial um, elements is shown. So it can signify any different man because the, all the features are not uh, shown. So instead of that, uh, apple is shown. So everybody is a uh, uh, son of uh, Adam. That's what um, the painter is uh, wanted to convey. And so that also depends on whether you believe on that uh, particular story or not. And then if you know the story and based on that, uh, this painting will be interpreted. And the same green apple can also be uh, printed on a, um, um, on a on a packaging design to just show uh, freshness and uh, the green apple flavor of a um, particular shampoo brand. So this has nothing to do with the particular story. So they are uh, based on the context. So nobody will interpret is that uh, uh, connected the, um, this uh, particular image with the story of um, this Adam and Eve, but here with the placement and the context, they will connect it. Uh, so it's based on how, how uh, because of this, all this brand and the green apple flavor and uh, all this uh, water splash, it, it just signifies our freshness and the flavor of that particular fruit. So uh, the same apple, green apple in two different contexts, they are um, um, acting in a different way. So uh, also Apple can act in a different way if you look at um, a particular logo, if you know the brand, so you will know, uh, you will understand. So this Apple is not an Apple, it's a brand Apple which is, um, 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 which, is um, um, which creates I iOS platforms, uh, mobile and um, other uh, computer uh, devices. So if you just see this comp uh, uh, composition of four squares and also you can similarly interpret this is uh, the Malian of of window and the window blue window sachet and this is the uh, talking about the window uh, the Microsoft window operating system. So another is the polysemy, polysemy uh, is uh, there is a multiple meaning can be uh, where, where there is multiple meaning going on in a um, uh, simultaneously. So poly means many and semi is meaning. So if we take an example of uh, this 
WWF uh, poster. So this is, <coughs> uh, there is a small lion over here and that creates a shillet of a lion. And uh, so the first uh, one meaning is this lions are moving and they, uh, they are fading away. So it's uh, talking about the, uh, uh, that's an endangered species and they are gradually moving in this direction of fading away and diminishing. And together also they are creating the shillet of the lion. So when you look at the picture, so you cannot read this uh, lion's icons because they are very small. But in holistically, in gestures principle, it is creating the shillet of the lion. So that gives the meaning of the lion and then uh, the meaning that they are um, going, leading towards extinction. And also if you look at the, uh, uh, the pizza order, um, uh, the way it is ordered in um, Pizza Hut. So this is uh, the timeline. One um, in this particular image, uh, the first meaning is the timeline. Uh, so this acts as a timeline. For first is uh, pizza, uh, pizza order, then making of pizza, then cooking. Uh, the order is getting cooked, and then uh, gradually the sequence is there. So it has a particular linear sequence in the uh, syntax, and then. Um, and then also it gives you a feeling of uh, the pizza, the way pizza is um, 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 uh, it is divided in different uh, pie sections. So that also gives uh, one meaning is the timeline and the second meaning is the pizza. That creates the holistic meaning of uh, the pizza ordering uh, timeline. Uh, so this uh, can be one example of the polysemy.